Hi guys and welcome to my channel. This is my latest video which is a marker speed paint. The alcohol markers that I'm using in this video are uh, Copic markers E00 and E02 which I use for the flesh and skin. The other markers I'm using are twin touch twin touch five markers. They're a cheap alternative to Copics. They're like a knockoff brand of the Touch Twin Markers by Shinhan. Um, I bought these markers a little while ago and uh, been experimenting with them for a little while and uh, I'm enjoying them so far. I'm enjoying Alcon markers so far in general. So the next step would be if I would like to is to move on to more Copex. We shall see what happens. Now the paper that I'm using I believe is Canson's marker paper. It's quite a cheap paper, but it's quite a good paper. Like it doesn't bleed through the surface underneath or anything, and there's very little bleeding on the paint on the drawing itself. So this piece that I'm doing is actually sort of like a cover artwork. It's art done by Glenn Arthur, who's an American artist. He does a lot of pop art and a lot of bright, colourful things. And I was drawn to this piece. So. It's quite, it's quite, this one is quite a good marker piece to do because there's quite a good range of colours. There's like the flesh tones which are really good which I can work on and there are also some oranges, some greens, browns and black which are really good. Now hopefully I will be doing also doing a review of these markers in a video shortly once I've used them a bit more and know sort of how they work a little bit more and how good quality they are especially compared to the Copex. Now, with alcohol markers, they have their similarities with watercolours, as you have to sort of plan out your, your um, drawing a little bit. Once you put the markers down, it's very difficult to remove them or lift them up. With watercolours, you can do that, but it's still difficult to do, as if they are staining and strong pigments, or they've been on the paper for a very long time, they won't lift. So this was... I found this quite difficult and a little bit frustrating because once I put a colour down, there's nothing I could do to change it. You'll see that later on. I put one side of the hair far too dark. It's very difficult to lift. Now, as well as the Copic skin colours that I'm using, I'm also using their colours blender, which was a lot of artists say that you don't use a colours blender quite a lot. I really disagree. I found that I used it quite often, helped in smoothing the colours over, lightening areas. And just in general, I used quite a, used it for um, the bit that I'm doing now, which is like, sort of like a bleeding bit. It's a faded gradient, so it's used with a pink, and it's blended out with the colours marker, colours blender, just to make it fade. With alcohol markers as well, when you put each layer down, it darkens it. So every time you put the same E double O number over the top, it would get darker and darker and darker, which is what I did for the eyes. But when working on the actual face and the shading on the face, I didn't want her face to keep getting anything darker, otherwise she'd have been orange by the end of it, which I didn't want. So that's why I kept going over it with that colour blender, just to lighten it all up and keep it all looking skin coloured. A little bit more information about this picture that I've done a copy of. Or a cover of. It is it was used for an album cover from a Dutch metal band. They commissioned him to do a piece and they did this. I'm assuming this is like the lead singer, which is uh, it's got, it does have quite a likeness to her. I've seen the picture. Now there are lots of brands of alcohol markers out there. Copic is a leading one. Copics are the ones that it's very popular for their brush nib and their Copic number system. They have a number system which teaches you like colour theory, so which colours go well together, how to mix certain colours to give get certain results in different shades. Now I don't have many markers in this set, it's a 60 piece set of the twin touch five markers. There was only probably about three or four, they're probably about good sort of five to ten shades of each colour but they were all of different shades of that colour, they weren't different tones of that colour rather, they weren't different shades, like there wasn't like um, a really light blue the next stage up and the next stage up going darker and darker, they were very different sort of blues, like an ultramarine blue and then like a Prussian blue, they are quite different so it was quite hard 
it's in this piece to blend like the browns because they were quite different and as well the touch five markers don't have a clear number system they're just randomly numbered so it's so I had to do my own sort of thinking and pairing the colours up together. Another thing why this is quite a good one is because the good picture to do is because there's not well there's enough blending in it to keep it interesting. There's also quite a lot of uh, flat colour which is what markers are quite good at because they obviously make things pop out a lot more and give that sort of posterised look which is quite good. Now I've started working on this flower and the flower has always given me problems to draw this in this piece. I've done this piece in watercolour and I've also done this piece in oil. I've recently posted the oil on my DeviantArt in the watercolour quite a long time ago and I always hated doing the flower because it was so difficult to do because it's quite intricate and quite small, quite a small piece on the overall picture. So I didn't really enjoy doing that so much. I did. I admit, I did find the markers easier to do the flower in, in the oil and the watercolor. Now this bit, I did her hair, and it was. I quite enjoyed doing that bit, and it turned out really well. This side it was the other side that I. Uh, it far too dark. Now with alcohol markers, they, there is a massive color shift from when they dry. Now if you look back from when I was doing like the flesh tone, it went down sort of like a grey colour and then it lightened to the fleshy pink that is now on the paper. Which is why it's also difficult as well with these markers, it's a real learning curve of any alcohol marker because you need to learn the colour shifts, what's it, what it's going to shift into. Now all colours do do the same, but they're not as shifting on most of them, so they do dry up a little bit lighter, but it's not massively lighter it's quite so it's easier to work with as well with watercolor you can always wet them up or lift them a bit to lighten their intensity or add more down to increase it it's easier to do now the touch five markers don't actually have brush nibs so that was also another challenge that i had to take into consideration and the bullet nib so it was a little bit more difficult to blend with those compared to the copics brush nib which i think Percy is the main difference between the leading brand markers like Shinhan's Touch and the Copix is the brush nibs. Because there are loads of cheaper alternative markers with bullet nibs out there, like Spectrum Noir and I think there's Fine Colour as well, which are another one from China. I've started to speed this piece up a little bit now towards the end, just to try and cut the video down a little bit as it was the entire piece from start to finish was over three hours. I did the sketch on a separate piece of paper, just a normal copy paper, and then I transferred it over. That's the really good thing about this Canson marker paper, is it's quite thin, almost like tracing paper, so you can trace over it fairly easily. But it's also quite durable, because I did lay lots and lots of layers on top, and kept working it, and it didn't bleed through, it didn't rip, it didn't warp or anything, it was really good, I'm really impressed with it. Now at this point I'm starting to move on to the left part of the hair, which I do far too dark and was real challenging which I really disliked. I do spend a long time trying to lift that colour up with the blender mark the alcohol marker, the blend colour splender, and a bit of kitchen rod to try and absorb some of that colour. I think the key thing to alcohol markers is maybe I would do a big drawing, big piece, or not add too much detail into things and try and keep it a little bit simple and try and make that blending really work. Now, I also had a problem with the eyes, which are about to show now, is that black in it, it bleeds quite a lot. Look at the black from the Touch 5 markers and it bled like crazy. However, it sort of worked over with the piece because she does have quite smoldery, smudgy looking eyes, so it did work. I feel in the end it wasn't too bad. I can live with it. I might have to use Photoshop to uh, correct the mistake of her hair on the left hand side, as I really dislike it. And looking back on it now, I can re really see that it stands out on the camera. <laughs> 
just using that close blender again on the face just to bring out those darker shades under her eyes to stop them being so dark to make it look more natural and more like a face. Overall I'm enjoying using alcohol markers. The shin, no not the shin hand, the touch five markers are they're fairly decent. I might try and replace some of the brush nib, the nibs with brush nibs from Copic. You can, I can find on the website to get them a little bit cheaper. So I might give that a go and see how easy that easy that is. I think next with these alcohol markers, I'm going to do a piece with just the Touch Five markers, so including the skin as well. Because I think that spot made it easier, make it look good on the faces. Those, those brush markers. So this is the last little bit now of the picture, just sort of tidying up overall and doing the uh, final bits of lifting on the hair as much as I can to get that colour to fade. So that's pretty much it now for the video. I hope you like this video and this speed paint. And hopefully I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.